Such an ugly vehicle. Absolutely ugly. This thing is a six-year-old's impression of what a cool car looks like. I'd rather drive a Ford Pinto than that abomination of a vehicle. If it costs 10K, I still wouldn't buy one. The future looks bleak and ugly. Perhaps a private ski club SUV that can be parked at one of the five charging outlets in front of the ski club. The reason trucks have looked the same is because trucks are meant or were meant to serve a purpose. This is not a truck. For 100000 this truck seems mind-blowingly overpriced. A $30,000 car has more impressive interior with similar materials. It's a hideous looking thing. The car is the most ugly monstrosity I've ever seen. Wouldn't want to be dead in it. He looks like he is in a car drawn by a three-year-old. Ugliest thing on the road ever. Even the Edsel was better looking than this truck. Video suspiciously sounds like an advertisement. How much did Tesla pay you for this? Oh, this is good, isn't it? People are so skeptical of the positive reviews that they're assuming the Tesla's paying people. So the future looks but ugly. <laughs> Tesla would be so cool if that moron Elon didn't do illegal union busting and threats to his workers like garbage. Probably the worst looking car ever produced. All the electric weirdos hyping. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. Jesus, this thing is ugly. So the Tesla Cybertruck reviews and previews are starting to drop on major channels. I thought it would be worth looking at some of their comments flooding through. What do people outside of the Tesla bubble think about Cybertruck? I'm sorting these by most recent so we don't get some really popular slash funny slash witty comments, but more of a general feel about overall consensus. After all, you write an epic, hilarious, memorable comment on YouTube, you'll dominate the comment section. I'd rather see what people in general are saying rather than the people with the best comments. Don't be a pedestrian or cyclist who gets hit by a Cybertruck. That is good advice. It looks like Gort's Revenge. I don't know what Gort's Revenge is. I love how the number one argument for electric trucks in comment section is, uh, I don't want to be stopping every 50 miles to charge while I'm towing a thousand pounds. Or 10,000 pounds. <laughs> that awkward moment when you make a mistake while you're trying to sound like a moron. As if everyone who owns an ice truck is towing at or near the max towing capacity at any given moment of every day. It's a fair point. It's ugly and wouldn't pay that price tag either. Love it. Waiting for mine. Why are Americans so obsessed with trucks? Two in the rear, one in the front. Nice. They're clearly talking about the motors, not anything else. Now, the only question is, are there enough Elon fanboys for this thing to turn a profit? Because we're all looking at the same thing and it sucks, right? Now, I've got to just take a moment here. Isn't it awkward if, when you're trying to hate on a product and you're literally looking for validation that everyone agrees with you? Like, we're all looking at the same thing and it sucks, right? Right, guys? It, it sucks, right? It's ugly, right? It's shit, right? Do you guys agree? Should I change my opinion if people don't think it's shit? Christ, this thing is awful. Laughing my ass off. It's just a flat no, starting with the no door handles. Such a headache for EMS when these things inevitably crash on the road like every other car does. There won't be mass EVs on the road for 100 years or more. No infrastructure to support everyone driving them. Battery materials are messy to mine. And once the batteries are dead, huge issue with what to do with them. Suit more as Domino's delivery vehicle. I think putting the blinker on the steering wheel should wait until we invent roads without curves or roundabouts. <laughs> I'm sensing some Luddites in the comments. I feel like to be in a sci-fi movie from the 70s. I like Elon and what he stands for, but this truck is hideous. I'm dreading the idea of seeing these on roads. All right, let's move on to the next video comment section. This from a Top Gear video, sorted by Newest. Looks like it attracts fingerprints like a refrigerator. Oh, wait. No thanks, Generation Z can keep it. Remember when Top Gear reviewed proper cars? Did Top Gear have to sign a waiver to not say anything critical? Now, I haven't watched this video, but I'm assuming they've given it a glowing review and or preview, and perhaps this person in their mother's basement assumes, well, it looks weird, therefore it can't be good, therefore they didn't say anything bad, therefore Tesla must have paid them or told them that they can't say anything bad. <laughs> Buy a union-made car. Don't support companies with no collective bargaining. Oh, wow. The brainwashing is real. Making five-year-olds proud every day. A tough crowd in the Top Gear comments. Take away the look and there is nothing truly innovative here. By the way, uh, where do we start? The 48 volt architecture, the stainless steel Lexus skeleton, the steer by wire. I I'm not even going to keep going. <laughs> the real truth will be determined by real truck people, not presenters like this bloke who thinks a lockable load area make it a truck. Anyone using Contash analogies when talking about a truck has no clue what he is talking about. Listen to a Rivian or a Ford person talk about their products. They are talking to truck people. But let's be honest, guys and girls. The Rivian R1T, the demographic to which that appeals, is much more female 
are much less likely to need their vehicle to do work things, as in pickup truck things most of the time. This is intentional. Rivian hasn't marketed this vehicle. They haven't designed this vehicle to meet the exact same needs as, say, an F-150 purchaser. This is an intelligent strategy from Rivian because they have a different market they can go for. They're not trying to compete with F-150s. They've carved out their own little niche. It's a great business strategy. Very smart. I'm not sure why you would throw Rivian in there. If Rivian wasn't in that conversation, they would have had a slightly more reasonable point. But okay. Then again, what we're seeing here is an example of small brain syndrome where somebody... I just have to be honest here, who has a very small brain, looks at this thing and goes, oh, it looks weird, therefore it can't do truck things, therefore <laughs> must not be a truck, and uses the same brain and looks at the Rivian and doesn't understand the difference in consumer who typically will be interested in a Rivian, which is a tiny bed, isn't equivalent to, say, an F-150 and thinks that they're the same. Yet the Cybertruck, I just, wow. Elon Musk is the best. One of the best car reviews I've seen in a long time. I still don't like the Cybertruck, but I respect it a lot more. I'll have to watch this video when I'm done recording this for you guys. Great to hear from designer and engineer, quite inspiring as well. Those stainless steel sharp edges will be super dangerous for other road goers. Try to stand a fridge up in the back, nowhere to tie it down to. Now, uh, this is patently false. I mean, maybe they didn't show this in the, the review video, but... Uh, absolute vanity project. Why is it so fugly and a useless steering wheel? All from a guy who can't even run Twitter, said yet another person, DLH3002 from his mother's basement. Absolutely awful. Let's move on to the next video, shall we? This from Haggerty. This video is popping off. The view count's a little bit delayed. Within first 24 hours, this will easily, easily crush 2 million views. Sorting by most recent. Such an ugly vehicle. Absolutely ugly. This thing is a six-year-old's impression of what a cool car looks like, says <laughs> R. Lopez 7348 from his mother's basement. Cyberpunk, Cybertruck, killing it as always. It would make a great police car. Now, this is a very good point. Great review. Drive-by wire is what engineers have been dreaming of. Ahem, what? That's mental. No one wants that. If the car can't steer in an emergency, when, oh, when I, I have triple redundancy, next again, SBS. <laughs> wow, this is a love letter to Tesla for the Cybertruck. Love it. Saves money on materials, drops the prices on all vehicles, but the Cybertruck comes out at a base price of 60k when we were told 40k, I'm lost to be honest. Well, half of that is inflation and half of that is insane demand, plus Tesla biting off bull and they can chew. The cost will, over time, come down and eventually, inflation adjusted, will actually hit that target. The same thing happened with the 3 and Y, especially the 3. It took a while for the Model 3 to actually reach that initial estimated base price purchase price of 35,000 bucks. But inflation adjusted, Tesla got there, but it did take many years of production first. Fun fact, the truck bed size is the same as a Ford F-250. Now this is how you review a car. Spectacular work guys, cool. Buy Dogecoin. Let's be honest here. How much did Tesla pay you for this? Oh, this is good, isn't it? People are so skeptical of the positive reviews that they're assuming that Tesla's paying people and or forcing them to sign agreements that they won't say anything negative. This is a very good sign. Great video and review still though, I'd rather drive a Ford Pinto than that abomination of a vehicle. If it cost 10k, I still wouldn't buy one. The future looks bleak and ugly. Video suspiciously sounds like an advertisement. Oh, this, is, this is amazing guys. No, this really, really matters. The fact that people again from their mum's basement are so skeptical that they see a glowing review, which is unbiased and reasonable and honest and assume that Tesla has bribed companies to publish phony reviews on their product really speaks to what an incredible product the Cybertruck is. When the car review channels, their specialty, have such incredible feedback, having driven a Cybertruck around for a few days or a week or so, that people suspect there's money exchanging hands. This is a paid advertisement. You know Tesla is onto something. They've really created a brilliant product. The thing with these EV truck companies is that they have never asked themselves any real questions about the purpose of their product. What if I don't want a truck for drag racing? What if I just want a truck to be able to take my boat or camper trailer on vacation? Uh, shout out to the 11,000 pound towing capacity. So the future looks but ugly. <laughs> Hilarious. I ask myself, how many truck owners do I know from my small farm town who really care about track speed? None. No testing of the things that matter to truck owners, towing capacity and range durability, carrying capacity, blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't call this a truck. Perhaps a private ski club SUV that can be parked at one of the five charging outlets in front of the ski club run with F-150s. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Now, in fairness, I don't think we'll have seen any towing and payload examples for the reviews yet because Tesla was lending these things out. This was just, what's it like to drive? What's the technology like? Under the hood, all that kind of stuff. So I get it, but this stuff will come. 
now that deliveries are starting and we will see what it's capable of for those people who distrust the actual specifications or the demos Tesla has shown. <laughs> I love this. I'd be feel embarrassed if I drive that thing in public road. I'd be feel embarrassed if that was my comment. But again, very polarizing design. Where is the storage space? He keeps saying pick up. Yeah, maybe they didn't emphasize that in this video, but again, the bed's bigger than an F-150, just. The reason trucks have looked the same is because trucks are meant or were meant to serve a purpose. This is not a truck. Said yet another person suffering from SPS. Oh, it looks different. You can't do truck things. Oh. Uh, this is hilarious. And the point here, ladies and gentlemen, is just you wait until people see what these things can actually do. Folks like this, six months from now, when some bloke on their work site's got a cyber truck and has shown off what it can do, will have put their order in and be embarrassed that this was their initial response. The horsepower calculators suggest that the horsepower must be in the neighborhood of 1040 to repel a 7,000 pound test weight vehicle to an 11 second quarter mile. The video says Cybertruck weighs 6,800 pounds and has 845 horsepower. I'm guessing that whoever, <laughs> Turd Ferguson here, <laughs> oh, what a great name, has done some Googling and the horsepower slash towing calculator that they've discovered isn't quaiting for incredible engineering on electric vehicles. Amazing review. How great, you guys. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the final video. This from Car Wow. Now, I watched this one yesterday. This isn't an official review. This was actually at the event. A lot of... Like literally, here's what it looks like on the outside. Hey, can I go see the Giga Casting machine? They're about to start deliveries, blah, blah, blah. So this guy didn't actually spend time with the vehicle. These are just first impressions, literally being at the event. Although I'm sure the full car wow review will come. Already over 2 million views, by the way. So sort by newest. It was good to see inside the factory and appreciate the Cybertruck more. And as always, very well done. Good job. Black looks sick. Sun rays meet Cybertruck. I have no idea how much these can save the environment over diesel cars. I think, in fact, they could leave a bigger carbon footprint. Tesla would be so... <laughs> Uh, Tesla would be so cool if that moron Elon didn't do illegal union busting and threats to his workers like garbage. <laughs> this truck might be great, but if you're in the USA, support your fellow worker by buying union made trucks. How good is the brainwashing? For 100,000, this truck seems mind blowingly overpriced. A $30,000 car has more impressive interior with similar materials. I don't know, seems incredibly easy to manufacture due to the hard lines and almost no curves, so the price just seems incredibly outlandish. The most expensive pieces are the drivetrain and battery pack, probably somewhere around 30 to 40,000 to manufacture. Probably the worst looking car ever produced. It's a hideous looking thing. The Wright Brothers first plane looked crazy. Then you got the Airbus and the Jumbo Jet. This Cybertruck is just the first generation of the future. All the electric weirdos hyping. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. I like Matt's enthusiasm, but the car is the most ugly monstrosity I've ever seen. Wouldn't want to be dead in it. Got a shocked face here. Tesla people are just fake car people, lol. Oh look, it beat a base 911 in a drag race that probably wasn't using launch control. The base 911 Carrera isn't a demon, it's not built for me. <laughs> Some of these basement dwellers are never happy, bro. Now it's true, Tesla could have picked a faster sports car, they could have used a fucking Bugatti if they wanted to. But the point was that the Cybertruck can beat a Porsche 911 in a drag race while towing a Porsche 911. That's pretty incredible. But, of course, not good enough for any basement dweller. He looks like he is in a car drawn by a three-year-old. Ugliest thing on the road ever. Even the Edsel was better looking than this truck. But, in kindness, hope you didn't burst into flames. Because <laughs> yeah, don't forget, remember, EVs explode into flames 24-7. Dog shit truck. Stainless steel so futuristic. Have you not heard of DeLorean? Came out in the 1980s. Imagine a DeLorean, only worse. Jesus, this thing is ugly. The features are nice, but the car looks horrible. I love my Tesla Model 3, but the Cybertruck, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> to emphasize just how horrible the Cybertruck is, search interest globally for buy Cybertruck has rocketed up since the event and remains at an extremely elevated level. Now, if universally the design was abhorred, obviously, no one will be searching on Google about where and or how to buy a Cybertruck, right? Let's try a Cybertruck Ugly. I'm not sure why people would search for that other than for validation of their own opinion. You had a few people randomly searching on Google for Cybertruck Ugly. <laughs> Don't quite, I mean, again, why would people search an opinion unless they just want to know if other people agree? But Cybertruck price, again, why would you search price unless you're interested in buying? We see a huge increase, look at this. And it's trending up too, interestingly. I have a huge spike for the event, then a dip. The next day, trending up after media coverage, discussion and reviews start appearing. Isn't that interesting? Finally, Cybertruck specs. The same thing. In fact, look at this, a massive surge. 
towards the end. So again, what's happening now is the reviews are dropping. Some people who are very vocal in the comments, ugliest fucking thing ever, it's not even a real truck, what shit fucking Elon fanboy. But the data here from Google search trends is showing there's a lot of people who didn't really know a lot about Cybertruck who are now very interested in owning a Cybertruck. Oh, and just remember, YouTube comment section <laughs> definitely contains the bottom 1% of humanity. That's not the entirety of the comment section, but a large portion. Very loud, but a very small minority. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. Ate like trash. Rarely exercised. Used alcohol as a stress crutch. Cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass. Got me back to the gym. Motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a f ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy... Everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely it's not that AG1 shit, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it. You'll find ways to use it. Day nine, 10 and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my God, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my God, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. 
Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.